Welcome to the Financial Planners Southeast Asia Podcast, a show dedicated to driving the positive evolution of financial advice, specifically within Southeast Asia. To join a global community of financial advisors sharing and learning with one another to drive the positive evolution of financial advice, head to xyadvisor.com. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the XY Advisor Southeast Asian Podcast. Gwen here, and today I am with Miss or Mrs. <laughs> Mrs. Akaliza mm-hmm. Chan. Um, I call her Lisa. Welcome to the podcast, Mom Liz. Thank you for having me here. No problem. So I'm actually I'm very interested and very excited to talk to you um, about your financial advice journey because I know that you've had you've had helped a lot of clients um, in the span of the years that you've been working in the industry. So I want to start with that. So you have been in the financial advice industry here in the Philippines for more than six years now. And you mentioned that you have served more than 200 clients. Um, So that's 200 Filipinos um, and more. Now, I really want to dive into that in this podcast. But first, I'd like to ask, before you became a financial advisor, what was your career then? I was an admin assistant of a Spanish company, a prestigious company for 11 Mm -hmm. years as admin assistant. Right, (laughs) right. And how did you come across uh, financial advice? It seems like a very different like career path. Since being an employee is financially challenged, so I'm looking for another income to support my two children, especially that that time my youngest son will be going to school so I need to have backup finances that's why I I am into this all right so what started out as like um, a side second job yes Yes. as a second job became like your full-time job and eventually your career so what made you decide to jump from um from your career as like a regular office desk job to this to become a financial advisor which is actually more challenging because you know um where you're self-employed and like here in the philippines the uh the financial advisors are paid in a commission basis so what made you make that leap because being an advisor there is that goal like mm, you hit the mm. 45,000, you will be promoted to financial advisor. Yeah. And aside from that goal, my heart leaps of doing this particular job mm. because it is, I find it important for every household, every employee, every, mm. every Filipino to have this financial need allocation. And when I hopped into this industry, yes, my heart is filled with joy and I mm. I feel that I have the freedom. I have the freedom to do because in employment you have to like I my work is seven to five thirty. So I in Mandawe. Yes, I yes. traveled mm-hmm. from Inglenilia to Mandawe. So that's yeah. how time is that's another like one another city challenge. apart. <laughs> yes. So it's a big leap, a big step for me. And I found the joy having this new self-employment or this having the in, uh, having entered into the insurance industry right right and that's really great that you found your passion um, in the financial advice industry and that's how you became 200 plus clients long and that's really amazing but I wanted I actually wanted to know surely before you got to help 200 plus people or Filipinos, I'm sure you've struggled a lot, especially because I think you didn't really have uh, any sales background, right? My only sales background in college, uh, Mm. network company, which did not progress. Then Mm. later on, some like six clients for the real estate. Mm. All right. And I've known that it's not how... 
how many people you know, but it's how you provided the services or what did you offer to your clients. So that's yeah. why I, I, I told myself that mm, it's doable. So I need to do something. And that's why I have done this. Right, right. And oh, so you mentioned that you had um, a bit of experience in real estate. So was that yes. something that you did before fin- uh, becoming a financial advisor? Yes, like I live in a low cost housing. So I want to share it to my fellow mm. friends also until such time they also got their own property. And it's not mm. it's like sustainable because it is expensive. But here in this industry, we can offer a, an affordable price with big benefits. Yes, that's right. That's right. And it's mm-hmm. all about how you can provide like the best um, product or the best service to the particular client. Now, how were you able to grow your client base from six years ago to, to now that you have like more than 200 clients? So most because I... Um, an 11 year old employee with the existing company I have mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so I have that connection they have my trust ah, until yes. they also referred and also some are from Toastmasters but more on mm-hmm. the company itself where I am employed for 11 years ah all right so you started mm-hmm. out um, with your client base as your previous uh, work so you started with your co-workers I see. Yes, All because right. I've known a lot of people there and that's mm-hmm. how my customers, my client expanded. All right, that's great. And now are you mm. still um, going through those employees or are you now tapping cold markets? I'm not into cold employees, but more on persons I've known. Like if ah. I have those 200 clients or oh, what if, you also have your own policy for your husband, for your mm-hmm. ma- parents, for your children. So that's how I top those. So it expanded within ah. the family and with, o- with, with referrals. Uh, all right. That's great. Mm. So, so the first thing that you or the first person that you target that is would be like the employee of your previous employer. And then once they have um, a, a policy or once they become your client, you also ask them to be uh, for you to be referred to their um, siblings or relatives. Is that right? Yeah. So whole uh, family, family uh, goals. All right. <laughs> all right. That's really interesting. Um, I, yes. Very, very interesting. Because I know for the for for some of the advisors that I've already talked to uh, here in the podcast, some of them are already tapping into cold markets, um, mm-hmm. and then of course there there's always the referrals, but they're actually using social media to um, tap into the cold market. But you you've you've had these two hundred plus clients just by. I'm reaching out to the relatives of your current clients. That is a very interesting uh, business model. And now, because of that, like, what are your strategies on, like, so since you've had this client who it was, who is an employee of your um, previous employer, like, how do you position yourself or what's your strategy so that you can um, successfully gain the trust of their relatives or friends or for the people they know? So it matters on our services. So it boils down with on how we serve them. And mm. because they are satisfied with my services, mm. they like a simple, a simple question with how much is my account value? Mm. Uh, can I withdraw? So I like reach out to them and even on the due payment even on the even some of my clients they let me do the payment so I assisted Mm. them because that that's their they want that I will do that to them so whatever they wish I will do that for them so that's how Uh I am uh, like very down to earth with my clients all right, so that means epic customer service. It all yes. boils down to epic customer service. That's awesome. So I think that's a really great 
trend that we're having nowadays to provide really good service to our clients in order for them to um, give give back to us by giving us referrals, by, um, you know, giving us really great reviews. Because I know for a fact that um, when I was younger, my parents initially had insurance um, and they stopped um, getting it because their financial advisor wasn't really giving them the... Um, the kind of customer service that they really wanted. And so they discontinued their plan. And, you know, lo and behold, 50 years later, um, we they don't have or they didn't have any insurance policy. So that's something that's really good. I, I feel like that's going to push the financial advice industry here in the Philippines um, to, to become a better one. Now, Yes. So I will add, aside yeah. mm. from those, we have a recording. We have a Microsoft Word wherein I record their like health need and their mm. existing provision and their gap mm. and so on with their retirement and college education and investment goals. So why I am recording that? Because mm. in times of they will back out. Or, mm. So I will go back to their goals of why they started mm. a policy. Yeah. So go back to their goals and that's how we will hold their valued policy. Ah, all right. So that's mm. how you keep them accountable for... Yes, because I know like when the going gets tough, the first thing that they crush out of their budget is their insurance mm-hmm. policy. Right? Yes, because so. <laughs> it's not our culture here to really put that as part of the bill. Right, right. I agree. I agree. So um, because I have noticed that my, my partner, Christian, also had that similar problem. Like um, if if one of their his clients had money problems around that time, um, they wouldn't pay their their policy, and, which was very sad because, um, you know, that for that particular family it's very important because like the the breadwinner is high risk he's working abroad all that stuff um and so that i think that's a really great idea as well is to provide like a document to them and to have them check that out again um so that they can realize why they did it in the first place and Mm -hmm. they'll continue so what's your success rate with that mom liz like does that work every time it's more on an addition of for building trust because aside from like the usual advisors, they just give you the policy, the e-policy. Ours, mm. we have we give them our financial dream map. We call it mm. as financial dream map because the reason why we started with the policy because of the financial needs. So that's the map we follow. follow. And sometimes we are financial, uh, financially challenged or the budget is not in favor so i told my clients to if your what if your premium is three thousand you can deposit as 500 next month is 1000 so as long as there's movement in your policy so that's how i encourage Mm -hmm. them that to not lose hope or to not do not lose hold of their policy even if Mm -hmm. they will just pay as 500 1000 if their due is 3,000 until such time it will reach to 3,000 and it, it will be posted. So that's a big help already in their policy. Oh, right, right, right. That's mm-hmm. that's also another great idea as well. And um, but I so you mentioned that most of the people that you're um, currently servicing are the the people who are like relatives of your friends or the people that you used to work with. Now, I know that you're a very active person, like you usually go around the city. So my question is, like, did you ever had any struggles when the outbreak, like the pandemic, hit the Philippines and no one was allowed to go out? I'm thankful that AXA has this virtual assist. So I didn't have the difficulty of reaching clients with the, in time of pandemic. Mm. But the challenge is is on how I managed to still reach out to clients because you are working at home. They, 
it's not an office setting so the mm -hmm. like your activities will be a home setting like looking to the plants folding liquid clothes instead yeah. of reaching <laughs> out to clients so it's a challenge and until such time that hey i need to do something because mm. i am in the financial insurance industry i need to to not be behind those performing advisors yes. so from the before pandemic performance and the pandemic scenario, I must still be productive. All right, all right. I agree. Mm -hmm. uh, and I agree with you <laughs> on that, that when the pandemic started, like it was very hard to separate like housework to like being on work mode because you when you try to go to your desk to work you see like the house is messy or like you haven't cooked lunch <laughs> and mm -hmm. so you try to do that first and then um, a few hours later the the day has ended and you still haven't um, progressed with work but how did you like finally transition to having like this normal work day setting did you sort of plan your day or on your food i'm not before i'm not really planning my day like if i want to open my emails or i want to do marketing prospecting so it's on my mood based on my mood mood but now with the there's axa has a an 8 30 let's get digital so it is a nice uh, move for me early in the morning to to reignite mm. the the career in me. But before, I cannot do that. I wake up mm. late, <laughs> and the uh, Avengers I only watch it in the the video, not really mm -hmm. on watching them at on at eight thirty a.m. in the morning. So there's a progress in me on like managing time. So I it's, it feels uh. still like. I'm having an office hour or I have to log in at 8.30. All right. So I guess the the initiative that AXA has provided for their financial advisors really helped in mobilizing you to um, get back on your feet in terms of doing work. Um, but um, I think you mentioned first that they created this virtual um, meetup. Uh, no, yes, virtual, virtual yes. activities or virtual uh, events for the yes. advisors to be on track of their their goals and their career. All right, and that that really goes to show how um, it's very effective if a company pivots um, very quickly in times of like changes. Like here yes. in, in the pandemic, right? And it's very mm -hmm. beneficial not only to um, clients, but you as financial advisors under AXA as well. So that's really nice. Now, so that's those are so the, those are your initial struggles, right? Like having to get mm -hmm. up <laughs> in the early. morning to work, <laughs> early in the morning to work. But now, like, how is the new normal working for you? Is it better now that you don't need to go out of the house, or would you still prefer, like, um, when when you know we get the vaccines and everything is good would you still go back to like going door to door to to check up on clients and now i have managed already the work from home so mm -hmm. every week i only go to the office once a week for a feel that i am still a an advisor <laughs> yeah <laughs> and the rest are more on the like lately there's an active referral and she will just tell me liz this is her name, the birth date, and email to this. So that's how it keeps me busy and it keeps me more active of my career. That's very interesting, Mom Liz, that you mentioned that you have an active referral because I know that a lot of um, financial advisors who are still new really dream of having that one person or like that one company who gives them um, a steady amount of referrals to them so that they don't have to like work as much in in looking for new clients. So how are you able to acquire those people who are very um, interested in giving you referrals? So it's a continuous activity. So you start that mm -hmm. really with the trust, the mm -hmm. relationship to give them, to support you. And... Mm -hmm. 
like last uh, Thursday, I met some of the employees, like five of them. Mm-mm. So good thing there's a, a lead of that company. So yep. they met there. So every when the leader works in inside the company, that leader when a co-employee will be told, oh, you get your policy <laughs> or mm. <laughs> prepare for critical illness because she's very influential because of what happened. So we will not be awakened if no, but not, nothing happens because of her sister who just got diagnosed of cancer last year. Mm. So that's why uh, she kept on sharing it to her office mates. And that's ah. the thing that keeps me busy lately. Oh, all right. That's very mm-hmm. interesting. So, um, people are campaigning for you and and campaigning yes. for 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 uh, the for, uh, the need. Yes, to, for the to need. Have their own policies too. All right. That's very interesting. Mm-hmm. So it's and I think that's also more about really going out there and looking for people because, like. S- you you will come across a person who believes in in the in the power of of a good insurance policy right and they will campaign yes. for you eventually right but aside and of so- course you mm-hmm. must be visible in social media that, ah, yes. that line that i posted in social media last week like across all ages 0 to 70 you have your 1K policy per month. So that mm. posting alone, uh, they are sold out to that because it's it's affordable and mm-hmm. it's it entails with it four-in-one access solutions already. Uh, all right. So Mm-mm. I also noticed that here in the Philippines, um, or at least maybe in just the circle of people that I know, that they are really looking for the cheapest um, insurance policy. Yes. Now, do you do you agree with that? Like, just provide them the cheapest one, or do you really like insist that they um, get the insurance that is really right for or really covers them fully? Me as advisor who who had a policy after college. Mm-hmm. and was put to waste because it is expensive. I got it. It's mm-hmm. expensive. And when I got married, I did not pay it already. So for mm-hmm. me, it's a, it's a lost business. But mm-hmm. now as advisor, I go for like, I am computing, computing you this need with this financial calculator. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. at the end of the day, it's on you on how much are you happy with to budget? Mm. So based on how much they budget. So the 1K is is okay for them. And I will also do that. I will also add that to increase investment, you need to do top up or additional mm. investment. So until it I will see. reach like 1.5 or 2,000 or in terms of income protection, for your 30,000 monthly expense, you need a five-year income protection of 1.6 million. So mm-hmm. how, how important it is for you. So it, it is based on the conversation still, but uh, sometimes it will, not, <laughs> it will not produce them that bigger premium because based on budget. As long as right. they have started, then that would be ha- I will be happy and I will be happy for them. All right, I see. So you, it, at the end of the day, it's still like the client's um, decision uh, if like preference yes yes the what they prefer if they prefer the full coverage or if they prefer to go with whatever um they can shell out on a monthly quarterly basis Mm -hmm. you can still upgrade and Ah, do some uh, minor up uh, policy change requests or major policy change requests I see. Yes, yes. Uh, I guess mm-hmm. that makes sense because you just, um, as long as you have that foot on the door that they've actually started um, or planted the seed for their insurance policy and later on they can just add up to it or get a new one so that they be fully covered. Yes, the purpose right. of financial review. Also. Right, right. Mm-hmm. That's, that's also... Hey, I'm, very, I'm I'm learning a lot from you, Mom Liz, and I, I think this is really uh, very helpful to um, financial advisors, especially those here in the Philippines um, and the ones that are starting out. I'm sure they're still trying to figure out like 
how to go about their business so that they can provide excellent um, customer service to their clients. But another question that I really wanted to ask you as well, because you have 200 plus clients already. Um, right now, like, are you hit constantly hitting your monthly goals? Because I know that um, in AXA, as well as other like um, insurance companies, they have monthly goals for their financial advisors. Are you hitting that well? Or are there months um, that it's it's still a struggle? Uh, starting October, I I maintain the consistency. So the apat dapat which AXA initiated. So as long mm-hmm. as you have apat na dapat, you can have trips, you have the mm-hmm. probability of quarterly volume bonus. Mm-hmm. And so far, I've hit those. Oh, so that's four clients in a month. In a month, and, yes. All right. I know for a fact that a lot <laughs> of financial advisors are not able to hit that. Then what's your secret? Because I go for cheaper amounts. So with the 1,000, you already have four clients. So mm. like imagine with four clients for only 1,000 premium, it's, you are acknowledged already with AXA. But mm. we don't wait there. We reach to, uh, to many clients. So if, mm. if it's not apat, dap, apat dapat, then make it 10, make it 15. Why not? Mm. Yes, exactly, mm-hmm. exactly. So that is the mindset of the of the financial advisor who has hit 200 plus marks excellent now what are what what is your goal for um for this year 2021 mom liz um any particular um, number of clients that you want to hit or any milestones in your career because we get bored of our current state we also dream to hop into another level. Mm. Uh, so if you believe uh, in be with the people who are in, who are successful, so I'm good thing my advisor is in is an MDRT, is a performing ah. advisor too. Mm-hmm. That's why her capabilities was uh, I also copied. And ah. maybe soon I hope for MDRT. Ah, um, I am right. a slow performing advisor, but still <laughs> in my heart, I want to reach and feel that to be performing in, as advisor. Oh, all right. No worries. Okay. I'm sure, Mam Liz, you'll be able to hit that. Mm-hmm. You are already consistent with your apat dapat with four clients in a month. And I'm sure that it's that's actually, for me, a very good achievement in itself that you're able to help. Um, for Filipino start in their, you know, in, in a better financial state with having an insurance policy. So that will definitely come through. And what is your advice now? So um, I, I don't want to keep you too long. Um, yes. Okay. For, for those who <laughs> didn't know, um, backstory is we had a few technical difficulties. So I don't want to keep Mom Liz uh, for too long. So my final question is, what is your advice for those financial advisors who are just starting out and are unsure if this is the, the type of industry that they want to build their career on? So you started to help Filipino clients. So when your career is shaky, go back mm-hmm. to your goal why you started. And don't forget that you have existing clients already. They are longing for you to journey with them long-term because insurance is a long-term investment. Unlike the bank, it's Mm short-term. So just, if you need assistance, go back to your team, talk to a fellow advisor, Mm -hmm. attend trainings because AXA gave a lot of trainings which sometimes we cannot attend because there are a lot. (laughs) Too many. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. Then with virtual assist, you can reach out to clients from Mindanao, Luzon. So mm-hmm. the one you know from Luzon, from Mindanao, reach out to them. Be mm-hmm. visible in Facebook. Mm-hmm. Give them the value of having an insurance policy. Why they need to save. Because it's common here. We let our money earn interest. Uh, we, let, we pay interest through credit. So better. Yes. We let our money earn interest. So change that mindset Mm -hmm. among the working people. 
All right, so that's, that's really would be good all. advice. <laughs> that's really <laughs> good advice. And I think I like that, like to change the mindset of instead of um, paying for your interest um, when mm-hmm. you collect debt, um, it's to change that and make sure that your money is working for you. So thank you yes. so much, Ramliss. I learned a lot from our short conversation and I hope that our listeners will be able to um, get a lot of those golden nuggets from our conversation as well. And yes, so that's it. Thank you so much, Ramliss. For, My pleasure, um, Gwen. <laughs> all the best for us. <laughs> oh, yes, definitely. <laughs> for this year, 2021, it's it's going to be big. It's actually um, huge so far, and it's still the first quarter. So yes. more to come. More, more. <laughs> all right. Have a good one, Ramliss. Okay. Okay.